Hello there, Mr. Clown here. In this video, I will discuss how automotive relays work and how to wire them too. Okay, relays are actually fairly simple. Uh, they're basically the junction of, well, not really the junction, but the hub of where two circuits uh, meet but do not connect. And I will show you what I mean in a second. Um, let me first tell you why these are used in cars. Two reasons. One, so uh, if you burn a switch, let's say for example, if you didn't have these and you kept on burning switches, it would be a pain in the ass to always change switches. Because you have to go into the dash, take, take everything apart, change the switch, whenever it burns, and yada yada yada. Anyway, you get the hint. These are easy to replace. These usually go first, and you just pop them out, put the new ones in. Secondly, for example, like headlights, uh, like I said, these actually are used to control um, a low power circuit controls a high power circuit, but they're independent of each other. Um, in other words, they're not connected to each other, as you can see with this diagram here, and they basically work by uh, the low circuit. Um, makes a connection windings and creates a magnetic field and pulls a switch to connect the higher circuit. So, for example, like headlights, uh, you don't want to run, say, I don't know, you have a high amperage, say, headlights or fog lights, aftermarket lights, whatever, and you have a high current draw. You don't want to be running thick cables inside your car just to switch to power those, to, 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 uh, power those headlights from the battery. So you could just run a short distance from your battery up front straight to your headlights and have this somewhere in the middle in the front that um, connection that circuit and you run little wires little wires to your little uh, toggle switch say inside to run the headlights so you'd have to have those heavy thick gauge cables go inside your car so that's another reason why we, we uh, relays are handy All right. uh, now a quick way to diagnose if you have a relay issue would be this. Go to the, sus the suspect relay. Uh, say you usually have two relays of the same kind next to each other. You, know, you can open up the box where your fuses are underneath, you know, you have a couple of relays and it says which relays do what. Say your fuel pump relay, say you suspect the fuel pump relay is bad. What you could do is take the fuel pump relay out and take the one adjacent to it out and make sure they're the same type of uh, relays and switch them. And turn the key to see if it works. Quick way to see if your relay is bad. Another way to see if your relay is bad is put your finger on it. Have somebody turn the key. And if it's a headlights, you know, have the headlights turned on. Or if it's a horn, have somebody push the horn to activate the circuit. And once the circuit, gets acti the circuit gets activated, you should feel a click. That click is the high amperage side being connected. Now, you could hear a click, but the relay could still be bad. What you do there is, is you're going to find that actual circuit, and I will describe the circuits in more detail, and uh, see the ohms, the, what the ohms are if you have high resistance. Another thing you could do is take your uh, relay apart, and this is what you'll find inside. You hear that? That's the actual contacts that click. Now what you could do is, if it's clicking and it's still you still suspect the relay, get yourself some sandpaper. Go inside where the relay is, the contacts, and uh, start sanding away both sides of the contacts. Sometimes you know something gets dirt or some sort of uh, corrosion happens in there, and the contacts don't make a good connection. So once you do that, you can uh, free it up. You know make a better contact and it'll work. Free solution to a, a bad relay. Okay. Uh, another way to do it. This is a ni nice little neat trick. Say a horn, horn relay. You, go in, you, you find the horn relay. You can uh, take the cap off and keep this connected and press it yourself. If you press it and it honks, and 
when if you go inside and you press the switch and it doesn't honk, that means your 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 higher amp side is good, but your lower amp side is bad. So you have to trace where in the lower amp side is bad. You have to trace the whole wiring and possibly the the horn switch is bad. That's a nice neat trick. I like that. Oh, vice versa. If you press this and still nothing goes on, you have to further diagnose what's, what's the problem is. That's a cool neat trick. Okay, now this relay here, as you can see this little diagram here, let me blow that up for you guys. This is what it looks like. Okay. And uh, like I said, this is the coil. This is what happens. You uh, turn your, your toggle switch inside, for example, your low amperage side, you turn that on, it energizes this coil here. This winding, that's this right here, these windings. Now, what happens is, if you energize windings and you put power through these coils, it turns into a magnet. And that magnet is what pulls this switch down on the higher amperage side. Now this higher amperage side, like I said, goes to your load, your lights, your um, your uh, fan, you know, your horn, whatever the case is over here. This is your high load. There is no connection be these, between these two circuits. The only connection is this magnetic field. That's it. Um, this will go, let's say, uh, this will go to your device. And this will go to your uh, power side of the battery, which is fused, for example. Um, and this is the contact on the inside. This contact. Okay. Now this gets pulled down when this gets energized, like that. And this connects it to what you want to connect to, to the battery. Uh, and these are the numbers, and I, I also have the numbers here. These are basically this 3051, 30. That's the side that goes to the load. 86 is the battery. 87A is, uh, in this case, is when this is off, there's no power going to your uh, low amperage side. That means uh, your device is an 87A on the closed. There's no power going to it. Now you could get creative here with this 87A and do a bunch of things with it, but I will not just I will not get into that for the purposes of this video. Um, it's a little different. Okay, 87, like I said, is the battery. So this is what it looks like. I did a little diagram here for you guys, and this is exactly what you see underneath here. And like I said, when you look underneath here, you're going to see these numbers. And this is usually standard. These numbers uh industry standard, what they go by. And this is what they represent. 30. 30 is usually your the power going straight to your headlight, for example, in this case. And the headlight is grounded over here. Um, power from your battery side, your positive side, which is fused, goes to your 87 terminal. Uh, now, these, let's talk about amperage for a second. These relays are labeled by amperage. You have to be very careful when you uh, rewire something for the first time from scratch. You have to have the correct amperage for the load that you're pulling over here. Each motor or whatever you're doing here has an amperage draw. You have to know that amperage draw to wire everything correctly. Very important. You have to match the amperage on the relay and you have to match the thickness of the cables going to that uh, draw that's, that's going to occur over here or else you're going to have a fire. So be very careful. You have to know how much amperage you're pulling over here, whatever you're, you're uh, wiring to it. And like I said, this thickness of the gauge has to correspond to this amperage also. The thickness of the gauge also relates to how far this cable, this wire goes um, to this draw 
this uh, load over here. Also, how far away from the battery it is. So there's two things depend on the thickness of the gauge, the thickness gauge of the gauge over here, amperage of the draw, the draw amperage, and how far, how many feet away you are from the battery. Uh, you can always look those up. There's different, you know, different thickness ga uh, gauge cables for different feet and average. Those are basic charts. You could just Google that. You find that anywhere. And the fuse, of course, has to be uh, the correct amperage for this. Um, okay. 86 is this one here, this pin. This is a five pin relay right here. One, two, three, four, five. All right. 86 is straight. Well, this is your. Hold on a second. 86 will be your low amperage side. Let's do 85 and 86 first. Let's be easy. 85, your low amperage side, your toggle switch, for example, inside your car. 85 here is here, and this is your toggle switch, and this is your ground. All right, this is a ground activated relay. That's what this means. So if you ever hear somebody say, oh, you jump the, re you jump the ground on a relay to, act to energize it, you just jump this, to gr this pin to ground. So you turn this on, your ground comes straight through here. In 86, you have ground here, you want power here on your low amperage side. And 86 will be your low amperage side here. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at your wiring diagram for your particular, particular, particular car, this will be hot in certain in circumstances. Sorry. Uh, it could be either ignition hot or always hot. You have to, you know, it depends on what, what type of circuit you're looking at. So that's one thing to note if you're connecting um, a light here or a ohm meter here, uh, uh, sorry, a voltmeter here to see how much uh, power you're getting to that spot. Okay, now your high amperage side, which is the top side here. 87A is when it's not energized here in the off state. You have 87A here. For, uh, I didn't connect this to any, but anything here, you know, to make this simpler. So, uh, one way to figure out, let me backtrack a little bit. One way to figure out the 87A part would be to ohm test 87A and 30, or in this case, sometimes called 3051. So 87A and 30, 87A and 30, if you connect these two pins together on the relay, right here, these two pins, you should have an ohm, uh, ohm, you should have an ohm uh, continuity, sorry. So let's do that. 30 and 87A, let's do that real quick. Come on. Okay. This is going over here to 30, and this is going over here. Hold on a second. Let me just do the audible sound. Okay, so when it beeps, that means we have continuity. I'm setting my multimeter to ohms, and we have continuity in these two pins. So that's good. All right, let's get back to my little diagram here. Okay. Now, that's continuity 30 to 87A. And, um,. Down here, back at the low amperage side, you should always have continuity between 86 and 85, which is 86 and 85. Okay? 86 and 85. Let me just show you that real quick. 86 and 85. And that reads 85 in resistance ohms. So we have continuity there. And remember, that is at the off state. So if you plug this out, that's how to test that. If you don't have continuity between those, that means your relay is bad. All right. Now when it's energized, you're going to have between 30 and 87. Uh, 87 is, by default, the one that, you know, there's no continuity between that and anything else. Now one more thing to note over here. Um... 30 and, 8, 30 and 87, oops, 
are usually thicker leads coming out of the relay. Like for example, this one, the thick ones. The thin ones is a low, usually the low amperage side. So that's one way to figure out what's what. Okay. Alrighty. Now, uh, usually. 85 and 86 you usually go with uh, somewhere about 22 or 24 gauge. A little thicker 22 would probably be better. Uh, that's what you usually go with in these uh, 85 and 86, the low amperage side, to do your toggle switch with, to wire that with. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have to say here. Of course, this is a battery ground, fuse, positive is the red. Positive. This is uh, grounding here, and the switch is also a ground controls uh, switch. That's your relay. Alrighty. Now, this is another type of relay right here, and what you see here is, oh, sorry, clown's a little retarded. I'm a little right above the retarded line. You have to bear with me a little bit. This one has E and C as the 30 and 87, and D and E is the 86 and 85, and A is 87, as you can see there. Now when you look in here, it looks like this. All right. Uh, let's see. So, I should have continuity between D and F, which is a small little ones here. D and F, the small ones. Let's see if I have continuity. Yes, I do. And that's the coil. So that's how you test that. And 86 and 85 will be here at E and C. E and C. When you look in here, you're going to see the letters. E and C. So if you do C and... Sorry. Hold it the wrong way. C and E, which is this one and the top one. You have continuity. So this relay is good. Now you also have to check, of course, if you have continuity between 30 and 87, if this is uh, connected. All right, uh, let me show you how this works real quick. This is a neat little thing. Ah. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now, a little science experiment here, just so I can visually demonstrate this for you guys. See what I do for you guys, for my audience? Alright, let me connect this lead to my little alligator clippy here. I'll do this as quickly as possible here, so not, so not to bore you. Okay, now this is what I'm doing here. I'm connecting. I'm going to connect 86 to 85, the coil which in this case is the two small ones, D and F, to a 9 volt battery. So you, I could demonstrate the clicking part. All right, so what I got here is connect. Now it doesn't matter which way you connect this. Polarity doesn't matter here for this little demonstration. So I got the small ones connected here. Okay. That's good. Now what I'm going to do, I rigged up two wires to connect to my little battery here. And let's see if I could pull this further in so you guys could see this thing clicking. I think you could see that. And I connect this to the little battery that I have here. It's got to get a little creative here. Let's see, this should click once I touch this. There you go. Magic. 
Now once I energize the coil, it turns into a magnet and it pulls it in. Okay, the coil is a low amperage side and when the contacts connect the high amperage side. So you got you want to hear this when the when it relay works. Alright. I hope I answered your questions. If you have any more questions, you could always ask me on the bottom where their comments are. Um, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see more of these videos, you could also uh, subscribe and like my, ch my uh, channel. It's free to like me, I think. No, it is. Just click on uh, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching this Clowns uh, Garage. And... Keep uh, watching for future videos. If you have any videos you want to watch, you could always uh, also post the comments. And thanks for watching. Bye.